Hello again, folks. And before I begin, I'd like to give a special shout out to all you youngest children out there. <laughs> I am one myself. I am the youngest of four in my family. And uh, the reason I wanted to give a special shout out is that from time to time, I know we get the short end of the stick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I saw that firsthand this weekend. We had a softball tournament my eldest participated in. It lasted from sunup on Saturday morning to sundown on Sunday evening. And it was 90 plus degrees. And I tell you, my youngest, her brother, was a champ. So was she. She won the tournament, which is great. But uh, her youngest brother... Uh, sat through it all, and you now, granted, he had Pokemon Go to entertain himself, but nonetheless, he really put up with the heat and uh, the attention on his sister, and I really appreciated that, and uh, I thought I would say a special shout out to all of you who have watched older siblings throughout your lives do things, uh, so, yeah, uh, but uh, I am grateful to be indoors again, and uh, what a great time to look at some stamps. <laughs> and uh, what I have on, on tap for today is a look at my most shameful, embarrassing purchase of all time. <laughs> well, maybe in, in the world of philately, at least. Uh, I have showcased some wonderful uh, treasures that I'm quite pleased with. And I think it's only fitting that I also uh, tell you about my failures for <laughs> the times that I missed the mark. And if I'm so, if you're so inspired, uh, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below of Pickups that uh, you might not be overly fond of upon reflection. <laughs> this isn't about public shaming. This is just about, you know, building community and uh, shared joys expand, shared hardships diminish, as a friend of mine once said. So here is something I regret. I, as you have seen on my channel, I really enjoy finding stamps in the wild. I love going off on stamp hunts and, uh, and finding stamps in uh, antique stores, flea markets, garage sales, thrift stores, you name it. I'll go looking for stamps. And it's always a thrill to me when I do find one or find an album or I find stamps because, you know, the truth of the matter is they're not all that common. Uh, it, it's becoming harder and harder to uh, find stamps out in the wild. And what that means is that I can have a tendency of not being picky when I do find something out there because I'm just excited to find an album. Well... A while ago, pre-pandemic, I think, actually, I was at a antique store that was going out of business. And there was a dealer who focused on stamps. His entire display was stamps. And in it, I found this book. And it was... One of the first times that I'd had a chance to hold and to have in my hands one of these master albums. And these things, when I, when I got it, I was like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> it's, it's heavy. It's big. I like it. And I didn't have all that much time to explore this album in the shop. So I did what I'm doing now. I flipped through it. And I saw what I saw. And I thought, well, heck. There's a lot of stamps in here. 
The album itself is cool. It's clean. I must be able to find something fun in here. And I also thought, well, maybe I'll use this for my collection. I can see myself finding a complete set of these. You know, this is M through P or whatever the case is. Maybe I'll build out an entire collection. I also, <clears throat> I hate to admit it, <clears throat> but I kind of liked the guy I was talking to. He was an old stamp dude. He was, uh, you know, so the, the, the owner of the stall was, was, was there and I struck up a conversation with him and he was going out of business. He was retiring. I liked him. We chatted stamps for a while and, you know, I, I, I got suckered. <laughs> so, and I mean, look at this. There's a lot of nice stamps here. It's a, I, I, you know, so I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, there's nothing. But <clears throat> when, when we got around to talking price, he was asking $400 for this, which I knew it wasn't nearly worth. And I also knew he was undoubtedly pricing at that so that somebody would bargain with him. And I did. And I ended up paying $200 for this. Mm, I shudder. But again, I was out and about. I was excited to find an album. I thought maybe I'll find something fun in here. And, you know, maybe it'll start a fun collection and, yeah. Nice little pull-in section. Nice little pull-in section. So, I got it home. And I started doing my research and deeper dive. And I overpaid, you know, and that's, that's fine. That is what it is. Nice pull in section. Um, I, it, it wasn't the first time that I have overpaid for, uh, something. And it won't be the last, but, uh, That's not what made this the worst mistake of my of my uh, stamp collecting career. All right, so this was the first, and I got it home and I put it on a shelf, right? And I was like, "Well, what am I going to do with this? I'm not going to take these stamps out of here because I like it's well preserved as well. You know, I'm not. A, I don't focus on any of the countries that are in here." Uh, so there's nothing that I would be adding to any of my collections. All right, so what am I going to do with this? Oh, I know. If I stand it up like this, and then I find some more, well, that will make a pretty cool display. And it'll become a, a part of the ambiance of the room that I store them in. It will be a... It'll be a showcase of the fact that I like stamps. That's what I'll do. <laughs> and that's what I did. So from there on, I started finding these albums in here or there and everywhere. And sometimes I paid what they were worth. Sometimes I didn't. And it was all with this thought of I'm building kind of an ambiance for my stamp room. <laughs> I thought it would look cool and it would be, I don't know. Well, one of the things I learned, by the way, is that when you store these heavy albums upright like this, which was how I had intended to do so, what ends up happening is that gravity weighs it down and it bends the pages and it warps them. Uh, well, that's not great. 
So then I started to lay them flat like this so that I would preserve the pages. So here's another one. And I laid them flat on shelves upstairs. And you know what? <laughs> they looked pretty ugly like that. <laughs> they, did, they didn't add any ambiance to the room, I can tell you that much. <laughs> And, and, uh, yeah, this one doesn't have much of anything. I think I got this one real cheap because, again, I'm collecting, I was making, uh, show pieces. You know how, how some people will buy, like, display books that they never read as, uh, decoration for their libraries and whatnot? Well, I bought Master albums for the same reason oh what was i thinking because when they lay flat like that they don't look great and you know who really didn't like how they looked was mrs silk <laughs> and if there's one thing i have learned is the importance of making sure that Mrs. Silk finds enjoyment in the things that I collect and <laughs> display around the house. Uh, so, now I am left with eight partially filled master stamp albums that I can't display anymore because we need the room on the shelves. There aren't going to be many stamps that I pull out of here because with a, only a few exceptions, they aren't countries that I focus on. And so I have made the decision to try to cut my losses, find a new home for these either via eBay or maybe I'll take them to my stamp shop. And just chalk it up as a lesson learned. Ugh. So anywho, I thought that it would be fitting for me since, you know, I do enjoy showing you the, uh, the successes I have to just do a real quick video on uh, a what was I thinking kind of video. And if you uh, are so inspired, feel free to share your own version of uh, what were you thinking. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, my friends. And with that, uh, if you like today's video, please go ahead and like it. And as always, subscribe to the channel. It means a great deal to me. Take care.